Hi, welcome to online tutorial series on digital signal processing using MATLAB and Python. In our second lesson, we talked about sinusoidal signals and exponential signals, and we talked about the concepts or concept of digital frequency. So, in this video, that is the second A lecture, we will write a MATLAB program for generating a sinusoidal wave and to generate a exponential signal. And we will generate both time domain signal and uh, and normal sample version of the sinusoidal wave. So let's start with MATLAB. Further, you can also download the source code of this video from our website that is www.jcbrolabs.org. And uh, please also subscribe uh, uh, our channel in order to get the latest update on video section. Okay, so let's start with MATLAB. So let's first save this file. So that is the first first thing we need to do. Okay, let's save. So we will start with close all and then clear all. So first we'll generate a sample version of the sine wave. So if we look at it, let's uh, so if you remember the digital wave was like sine omega n right so that was our x of n equals to sine omega n so we will generate this particular signal so for that uh, first generate the sample index generate sample index that is uh, let's start vary this sample index from minus 100 to 100 so in total we are taking this 201 samples uh, now simple will generate a sine wave that is very simple in MATLAB sine that is omega n so we are taking our digital frequency as 0 0.1 into n right that's it so now we want to plot it so we'll take a stamp plot of it so n comma x and then we'll make it fill so that it comes with the solid color and we'll make a title like uh, sinusoidal signal digital signal digital sinusoidal signal and then we will put the x label to it as sample number and we will put the y label as amplitude uh, we have written this is LAPEL and we will make a grid on ok so let's yep. so this is our digital sinusoidal wave uh, with 0 0.1 as a frequency of this digital signal right, so this frequency of this wave is 0 0.1 uh, radians per samples okay so now uh, moving forward we also talked in a theoretical lesson we also talked about like uh, how to convert this analog signal to digital one and then there is a concept of sampling frequency so what uh, as a next uh, frequency we want to generate a uh, uh, analog frequency analog signal in terms of the computer so ultimately computer is a digital system so everything comes into a digital domain so we need to define sampling frequency and all these things so the idea of this is if someone says okay generate uh, uh, 10 hertz signal and that is not possible to calculate directly from here like if one uh, someone asks what is the frequency of this signal in analog domain so maybe you won't be able to tell exactly because this is a 0.1 is a digital frequency so if someone asks okay generate a 2 hertz of signal on computer so how will you do that so we will uh, learn how to do exactly so let's say generate uh, we can say analog signal so this analog is um, a little confusing because in computer 
everything is in digital so ultimately it is a digital signal but for the representation purpose it seems like it is a analog so we want to generate a two hertz of signal so first of all we need to define the sampling frequency so from are the concept uh, from the concepts of the sampling frequency uh, sampling theorem the sampling frequency should be greater than twice the that of the message signal frequency so in order to being on the safe side we will consider a 100 hertz sampling frequency now second point will be we need to define the time axis right so ultimately if we are having sampling frequency so we need to define this time axis on each sample index so suppose uh, this is a 100 hertz so sample will be coming up on at a 0 0.01 second interval so first will be 0 then next will be 0 0.01 second and so on so we can that define directly here like for say 0 to 1 by fs so it is taking as a sampling period and then now it is in time axis so it is directly in time so suppose you want to generate a two second of duration two second uh, duration signal so uh, this will go up to two and then we will define a signal frequency let's say two hertz uh, we can make a comment uh, signal frequency now we'll generate it uh, generation is very simple 2 into pi into f into n that's it so we have just uh, make the concept of omega t so this t uh, uh, generally if we have sine omega t so in digital domain it is omega t and t right so in n t is directly is taken care of by this command because we have generated this n directly in the time index and then this omega is 2 pi f that we have written here like 2 pi f okay you may be wondering why, why i have not added the amplitude so i am assuming the amplitude to be one so if you want to make it of different amplitude then you can add this amplitude symbol uh, here okay so let's plot it so for that we will create a figure and then we will make a plot command and that is n comma y so we want a plot to be a little darker or line should be a little thicker and then title so we will write a title so that uh, this two hertz automatically comes into the picture in the title so there is a procedure for that so we'll make we will concatenate the two string so this f is in numerical so we'll write here num2 str because it can only concatenate the strings and then we are conc concatenating it with this hertz sinusoidal signal right and then we'll put again x level so right now the x level will be in time and that to in seconds and then y level will be in amplitude and then we will make grid on okay, so let's yep so this is a two second duration of two hertz signal let's say we change this to 5 hertz because still the criteria is met and let's make it so it's a 5 hertz signal okay so now let's increase this as per if i generate a sampling frequency of 25 hertz so still a as per sampling theorem sampling criteria is met but let's see how our signal looks like so if we run it uh, it doesn't looks like uh, okay it is a uh, very critical to here so let's make it to 35 uh, still sampling criteria is met but our signal seems to be distorted now so there may be a cache into it like uh, you may be wondering uh, sampling theorem criteria is still met but why this is not being simulated properly so one uh, rule thumb rule is this like you should take uh, you should take the sampling frequency if you are simulating the sampling frequency uh, should be or nearly five times uh, the 
that of the message signal so that your signal will look perfect so because if we make it like even 49 so signal will distort completely yeah that is becoming something else and if we make it 50 you will you will not recognize you will not say whether it is a sine wave or not so just make a rule of thumb like if sampling frequency is 100 hertz so uh, make a message frequency up to 50 hertz only right so up to that uh, this signal will be more better okay so uh, that about the sampling frequency now let's generate the next thing was the exponential signal so now let's generate the exponential signals so there were two kind of exponential signals real part the sine wave and this cos wave are the real and the complex part of the exponential signal complex exponential so right now we are generating the real exponential signals so exponential we have uh, in the form like a to the power n where a could be any number 0 to infinite right or it could be negative number as well so let's take a as 0 0.9 and now generate the n as a sample index sample number so let's say we are taking from minus 10 to 50 okay because it is to the power so it will increase uh, very rapidly so this number is less than 0. Point, uh, less than 1 so the graph of this signal will be something like this so let's see how it looks like and z equals to it will be simple a dot because we want to do element wise element power so a to the power n and then let's make a stamp plot uh, n comma z and then make a title exponential signal and then make x label as sample number and then y label as an amplitude and then grid on okay, so let's generate it yeah so it is perfectly a uh, decaying function so if you look at our sample number zero amplitude is one right so this is the indication like this is fine let's make it fail now let's take it as a 0 0.2 let's run it uh, so at minus 20 index the number is very high 10 to the power 6 order so as this number approaches towards uh, negative in, or towards zero this uh, the decaying rate keeps on increasing right so at even at the minus 10 index it is very large value so let's take this value greater than 1 so let's say 1.5 so it will be exponentially increasing function okay now let's say make it minus 1.5 so it will be in alternating duration because for positive values of n for even powers of n it will be a positive number for negative values of n it will be a negative number so it is not looking like so let's change the index let's we are generating to 5 only yeah you will find it is alternating and similarly if we make it less than 1 between 0 to 9 so again it will be decaying with alternate so in this case we can have this one yeah so it is a decaying uh, alternate first a positive number then negative then positive negative positive negative and so even at zero it is one so this is how we can generate different kind of signals and exponential signals and everything in MATLAB so I hope you understand a lot from this video and to download once again to you can download uh, the source code of this video from the download section of our website um, that is www.jcbrlabs.org and also support us by subscribing our channel so that's it for this video thank you